SMT Nation, let me have a moment of your time so I could tell you a little bit about our partner, Southern New Hampshire University, otherwise known as SNHU. SNHU is a great opportunity for a lot of you out there to possibly embark on a new career training. It's a school that can give you world-class student support so you never feel left out. They've got great opportunities and programs for you to earn job projection for growth, flexible term starts 24-7 online accessibility. They also have a very extensive portfolio of degree programs with some of the lowest tuition rates across the country. And quite often you can transfer up to 90 credits toward any undergraduate degree that they offer. Different courses might include network security, application security, incident response, and investigation through their online BS and cybersecurity, one that I feel is quite compelling for a lot of you out there. So using our partner link down here in the description, as well as here on the screen, you guys can see it, snhu.edu forward slash need. You can check out their programs, get more information, register for courses, and sign up for your future. Consider SNHU for your future coursework needs and getting a career in something very rewarding. Check them out. Link is in the description. SMT Nation, we are back. Nation, in today's video, we are going to be speed testing the T-Mobile network in the lower level of the SMT HQ. But the way we're going to do it is a little bit unique. We're going to be testing it from the lower level, but we're going to be locking in a specific band. In the previous video, it was N41, standalone 5G on the T-Mobile network. It didn't work. Uh, we couldn't get the signal. Once we ran the command to lock in N41 standalone, we couldn't get a signal. And that's what you guys are seeing right here. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and lock the N25, which is a lower frequency. N41 is 2.5 gigahertz. Uh, and N25 is 1.9 gigahertz. Theoretically, it might work, right? The N41, maybe the frequency was too high. Power level's not good enough. You know, something technical, right? And then, you know, um, here we are with N25, a lower frequency. Theoretically, it might actually work. All right, so let's go ahead and let's go to the next page. I'll show you guys here that we did go ahead and put NR5G and it is 25 SA, so N25. No other carriers, no other channels, no other frequencies are enabled. We'll go ahead and apply band configuration. And it says apply done. And we got a signal. It says 5G. And I think here we have a 20 megahertz channel of N25. The other licenses of PCS in that same frequency are still on LTE. I think they have 10 megahertz of it, I believe. Anyways... Now that we have a signal, let's go ahead and speed test it. I don't think it's enough bandwidth to trigger the 5G UC, right? So that's why you're seeing just regular 5G. Uh, and I think it needs more bandwidth in order to show the 5G UC icon. So you typically see it with N41. Uh, T-Mobile has 180 megahertz of N41 here, I believe. It's either 180 or 190, I, I forget. But um, yeah, we're testing the N25 piece on a standalone 5G network. Go ahead and speed this up for you guys, and uh, we'll take a look at the performance once it's all done. The top three tests are the tests that we took on T-Mobile's N25, the 1.9 gigahertz, the PCS spectrum. Uh, this channel looks like it has some decent download, right? Uh, but the uplink seems kind of weak, and I think that's because of the signal quality. It's just not a strong signal down here. So a uh, typical problem that mid-band channels have in lower levels. It's, uh, it's not really surprising that this is the outcome. The downlink is definitely serviceable. We've got a range of 68 megabits to 76 megabits. The uplink is where things got kind of rough, and that's because the signal quality is probably so weak. Uh, we've got a top end of 1.7 megs up and a low end of 0 0.31 megs up. All right, so the, not ideal. Uh, I'm not sure if you could hold a video call with that throughput. I think it would be a challenge. The downlink, perfectly fine. If you were like, watching video, it would probably keep playing, no disruptions. Uh, but N25, you know, being a slightly higher frequency than any type of low band, right, you can kind of see the limitations in how well it works. Uh, maybe your experiences are different. Maybe you guys can share with me 
kind of tell me about your experiences with N25 standalone, you know, inside of your house. Let me know if you are able to get that signal in your lower level, if you have one, uh, what that experience has been like. Uh, honestly, I this is pretty typical of what I see. Uh, the N41 didn't work down here. Uh, the N25 did, right? Lower frequency kind of helping there. Uh, but what are your experiences with uh, N25 and, and that channel? Let me know if it's been pretty good, if it's been helping the experience. Uh, what has it done for you, you know, performance-wise, that sort of thing. I think we'll make our next video. We're going to be doing the N71 piece. We'll see how that performs, and we can kind of compare it. Uh, N41 didn't work. Here's our speeds from N25, and we'll test out the N71 in the next video. So stay tuned. Keep it locked for more content here from the SMT. Like and share this video. Subscribe if it's your first time here. Check out all of the links in the description, the ways to support us, things that we have going on with the community, amongst other things. Thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next one.